In this video, I will explain the basic principles behind the electrophysiological methods that are used to measure ion channel activity. I will start with voltage clamp and then extend the technique to patch clamp. The starting point is that as ions flow across the cell membrane, they move charge across the membrane. This can be detected as a flow of ionic current or as a change in membrane potential or voltage. The earliest measurements relied on placing an electrode on the surface of a cell and measuring changes in voltage. The early studies of Hodgkin and Huxley on the squid giant axon used a fine wire which was inserted inside the axon along its length and changes in membrane potential were measured. But these methods have limitations. First of all, think about what happens when an ion channel is activated. The first consequence of activating an ion channel is that ions flow through the channel and carry current across the membrane. This causes the membrane potential to change. The change in membrane potential is detected by voltage sensitive ion channels in the cell. They may be the same type of channel that you are interested in studying, but they may be quite different channels. They all respond by further increasing or reducing current flow and changing the membrane potential. Again, this can induce further changes in ion channel activity, further changes in current flow and membrane potential, and so on. So, the voltage change that is recorded in response to activating one ion channel can end up reflecting the activity of many ion channels in the membrane. So, a method is needed to isolate the current flow that is due to activating the channel of interest. That is where voltage clamp comes in. If you force the membrane potential to stay at a fixed level, it cannot change when ion channels are activated. So the current flow that is measured in these conditions is due entirely to the channels of interest. In this way, you can directly measure the flow of ions through a channel free from the complications associated with a changing membrane potential. Also, by fixing the voltage at different levels, you can study directly how voltage affects the behaviour of an ion channel. So how do we control the membrane potential of a cell? We use methods known as voltage clamp, the principles of which are illustrated in this slide. Here we have a cell sitting in a chamber surrounded by a physiological solution. We start by inserting a microelectrode into the cell. The electrode is made by heating and stretching a fine glass capillary until it snaps, forming two glass capillaries with very fine tips. The glass is filled with an electrolyte and connected to an amplifier using fine silver wire. Another wire connects the amplifier to the bath solution and it acts as the reference point against which any changes in voltage across the cell membrane are measured. The output of the amplifier gives a direct measure of membrane potential. The output of the first amplifier is then fed into a second amplifier, which is used to clamp the membrane potential. A voltage controller is connected to a second input on the amplifier to control the voltage level. To understand how it controls voltage, you need to have an appreciation of how an amplifier works. There are two inputs and one output from the amplifier, and it basically works by continually comparing the two inputs and sending out a current that is proportional in amplitude to the difference between the two inputs. So when the inputs are equal, the output from the amplifier is zero. But the output increases or decreases as soon as any difference between the inputs is detected. In this way, the amplifier compares the voltage from the cell membrane 
to the voltage from the voltage controller and adjusts its output depending on any difference between them. The output of the amplifier is directed into the cell by a second microelectrode. If there is a difference between the membrane potential and the applied voltage, the microelectrode injects current and this acts to change the membrane potential so that it matches the applied voltage. This current is the same magnitude as the current flowing through any activated ion channels, but is opposite in direction. So, what is recorded is, in essence, the current that you need to inject into the cell to stop the membrane potential from changing in response to channel activation. And importantly, this happens on a very fast time scale, so that there is an instantaneous injection of current as soon as any change in voltage is detected. The principles of this technique were developed by Kenneth Cole in 1947 for studies on the giant axon of the squid. The electrodes used then were simple wires, but no other cell type is big enough to accommodate two wires. Pulled out glass microelectrodes enabled smaller cells to be studied, but even then there are not many cells that are large enough or robust enough to withstand impalement by two microelectrodes. So the kinds of cells that could be studied using this technique were somewhat limited. The work of Erwin Nair and Bert Sackwin in the late 1970s and early 1980s led to an extension of the technique which revolutionised ion channel research. The new technique was called patch clamp and the reason for this is illustrated on the slide. Instead of impaling the cell with a sharp microelectrode, a pulled out glass micropipette with a smooth tip was pressed up against the cell membrane. The membrane interacted with the glass to form a very tight seal which isolated a patch of membrane on the cell. Their subsequent experiments found that by applying some suction down the pipette, an even tighter seal could be formed. The seal was electrically tight, as indicated by an electrical resistance on the order of gigaohms, or 10 to the 9 ohms. That led to the term gigaseal, to describe the tight seal formed between the membrane and pipette. It was also found that if there were any ion channels present in the electrically isolated patch of membrane, currents flowing through them could be recorded, leading to the first single channel recordings. The seal is also mechanically very stable and that allows different configurations of the technique to study different aspects of ion channel activity. If the pipette is jerked away from the cell, it can remove the patch of membrane while the seal remains intact. In this configuration of the technique, known as the inside-out patch, any ion channels present in the membrane patch can be detected and recordings made while the channels are bathed in a controlled solution. Alternatively, if more suction is applied to the inside of the pipette, it is possible to rupture the membrane patch and that gives access to the entire membrane of the cell. This is called whole cell recording. From whole cell, you can slowly withdraw the pipette. That stretches the membrane around the seal until it snaps and reseals. Now the patch of membrane is inverted so that the cytoplasmic face of the membrane is in contact with the solution inside the pipette. This is called the outside-out configuration.